Hey guys, uh, Barry here with uh, Geek Out Studio and also Jerry. Uh, and we've gotten a lot of requests, a lot of questions. Just everybody wants to know how we made Crescent Rose. Um, so we figured we would actually uh, do a video series on how you can make your Crescent Rose. Uh, this one we're just going to go over. Uh, kind of like an introduction, we're going to show you the templates, uh, go over what we've learned, uh, and just kind of really give you the design process and the background on how we designed it. The get start part. Right, the get start. Um, and basically what you're looking at is what everybody notices and sees and recognizes uh, is Laura as Ruby and Crescent Rose. And the interesting thing is Mark 1, when we started this, we made all of these blades out of quarter inch plexiglass. Yeah. I mean, this is actually the third version? No, this is uh, the second one. This is like Mark uh, 1A. Okay, so it's not the Sentra ones, it's the... Uh, yeah, uh, all, all of them are foam. Yeah, they're all foam. So... Um, and this had the, the first version had a lot more pieces on it, and over the several cons, you know, yeah. some things have broken off. Yeah. Um, so this is like Mark uh, 1A, and basically all we've done is like rebuild the head. The shaft has stayed the same until we go to full-on Mark II. But the first one, all of these blades were plexiglass, quarter inch plexiglass. And that thing probably weighed like... 15 pounds at least. No, uh, Laura's saying it was more like 20, 25 pounds. She had a bruise. Yeah. It had some heft. Um, we got it down to probably, what, 10? 10, 13 pounds, um, according to Laura now. Uh, and as we point out, this uh, this picture is actually of Mark 1A, where all the blades are made from quarter-inch EVA foam, coated with... Um, resin? Yeah, just coated with resin. Um, these, like the main like main blade here and these talons We're cracked. Still... No, they cracked uh, for this, which caused us to go to Sintra. Well, also in this version... The 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 front town was still the, pl the 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 plexiglass. No, this these are all foam. Oh, I thought I thought we had left that nope. one as the plastic. Nope, these are all foam. Okay. So and the last version we made this one, uh, the 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 main blade here, and these out of central. Uh, all this we'll go over later. So. Anyways, this is where we we started, and we'll actually go now into. Sketch up, and we'll talk a little bit more. Left one. So this is where we actually started the design process and made everything. And uh, well, let's be honest. The uh, the design process started with combing through hundreds of photos, <laughs> trying to figure out what the hell is. This yeah, because thing? we we were we started designing this when season one was still going. Yeah, we were like halfway through. Yeah, and we're like. We can do this. Yeah, we can do this. Um, About two days later and 100 photos through, it's like, we can still do this. Yeah. It's going to be a little, little tough. But um, we use SketchUp to uh, scale and actually make our templates. And I I got a link in the description below on how you can make templates um, and scale props mm -hmm. in SketchUp in a different video, yeah. and you can get uh, that's linked down below. And you, you know, you can always do you use other programs, ones that you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. uh, Photoshop, uh, you can always scale an image easily that way. Um, the the key thing with scaling is when we design our props, there there's two types of scale. There's true scale, which is the prop is scaled exactly the same dimensions as it is in, in whatever source material, anime, movie, whatever. Yeah. So if it's seven feet long in the anime, anime it's seven, seven feet, feet long in real, real life. life. What we've done a lot of times is we scale it to the model, you know, the person that, carrying it. Yeah, that you know we're we're building this for. Yeah. Um, in the case of uh, Ruby and Crescent Rose here, uh, the 
the model, the, the, per, the person we built the prop for um, was five foot four. Four. Yeah, and, Laura is the exact height of Ruby. Yes, five foot four. And through the research that I did, Ruby herself is five <laughs> foot four. So I, we were going to scale the scythe to Laura. Her scale, whether it was plus or minus, uh, we because we wanted that it to look proportionally correct to right. her. It just so happened we lucked out and she has to be the same size, so. Yay. Uh, but you can see here in the in the first one, what we had to do is like what I did in uh, the, uh, the scaling and template uh, video, is we actually had to go through and trace uh, around uh, the base image to get uh, to make all of our parts. Yeah, because once again, we were doing this when Ruby was the first season of Ruby was being aired. So the amount of of images that we had to base this design on was very limited. Yeah. Whereas if we if you look now, yeah, there's, there's a crap ton of of images, and you know that's one problem you you may have when trying to design a prop based off of an anime or whatnot is if the anime or the character is relatively new, yeah. the amount of source material you'll be able to find will be quite limited. limited. Whereas if it's something that's two seasons in or a couple of years old, so, the amount of information you'll be able to find should be you know, plenty. Yeah. Um, but once, once you get to this part... Um, what you uh, what SketchUp allows you to do is you can basically once you create all these these components is you can actually highlight it and what it, it's called explode or something in the program. Well, you you can explode everything uh, right. each individual line. The way I drew it in here was each one of these is an individual piece. Um, well, actually, this is this version is all just lines traced. I then went in and created individual blocks. Uh, that way, when it did come time to print this out, I could easily just pull the whole thing apart. Part, yeah. Uh, and print out individual pieces. Individual pieces. Or the whole thing. You know, that way, <laughs> first time around. You know, you're not printing out all this, and you don't know how. Uh, for instance, we know that this piece overlaps this piece well in this rendering right here if you were to print it out straight from here you wouldn't know how much does it overlap or whatnot but right. with this you can easily just move this apart as a separate piece and just print this out and you know all right i can cut this piece out of whatever material i want and then all i have to do is connect it right to the rest of the so, and that's actually how we separate and how we make our templates and how we get the pieces to put all of this together. Now, this was Mark 1, and, <clears throat> whoops. and like I said, now we are moving on to Mark 2. And this thing is basically, what, about as accurate as you can make this thing in real life? Yes. Um... Like I said, Mark II was done several months ago, so you know we're three seasons into Ruby now. Yeah. Um, and for for the fans of Ruby, you know they know that the diff the the, the quality of the anime the has detail gone up. <laughs> the detail in the anime has gone up from season one to season two. Um, so when we were making this version, there was a ton more photos. They were highly detailed photos. Um, however, I based this off of Mark One, right? Uh, and there were very, you know, I had to change basically every piece, but I only had to change it slightly. Yeah, you know, it was a little, little nudge here, a little nudge there. But what ended ended up ended up happening was a piece that is almost, you know, as accurate as it is humanly possible to make this based off of. You know, screenshots from an yeah. anime. You know, so right now we have the the two versions. We have the full unfurled version 
that is seven feet tall with a six and a half foot blade? Uh, I think it's more like five. Five, five and a half. Yeah, five and a half. Um, but, you know, it, you, you certainly don't... Ha- now, we do true scale props. You don't. You certainly don't have to do true scale. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of cases where the convention that you're going to uh, just won't... Won't, won't not- allow it, or it's just impractical, like Dragon Con. Yeah. You know, or, Con- or San Diego Comic Con. Con- yeah. Where you barely have enough room to breathe, let alone yeah. bring something that's <clears throat> seven feet tall. Um, so... You know, when you're scouring the internet, you may come across a bunch of people who have props that are chibi size. Yeah. <laughs> which are, you know, Crescent Rose is supposed to be seven foot seven foot tall, but they built Made it, it like, you know, three feet or so. Or smaller. <laughs> or smaller. And that works perfectly fine for those kind of conventions. And, you know, whereas a more spread out convention or photo shoots that, you know, like what we do a lot, you know, we whip out the big Crescent Rose yeah. because it is... You know, something, you know, kind of spectacular. It's impressive. <laughs> but what we decided to do to help us in the the smaller convention area was to create the compacted version. Luckily, in Ruby, they have compact versions Versus of the of weapons. It. Some anime is dull. Yeah. Um, so you're just going to, have to, you know, Although work I, with what you have. Although, compact is kind of maybe a misnomer because this thing is still like four feet uh, so you're going. This what it, what's the, what's the measurement? Uh, it's about three feet. Okay, so you're this. You've got this three foot block that's going to be sticking out on either side of your back. Yeah. So you know, and on a five foot four, four petite four little girl, girl, it it you're it's still going to be. <laughs> yeah, and the way I, I designed this was <clears throat> I you know I had all these components, uh, and I knew how this looked. Closed, and there's actually a lot of gifts out there that show it uh, unfurling, unfurling and compacting. And, yes, uh, com- uh, yeah, compacting. Yeah, which um, that's a completely separate video. <laughs> yeah, um, so I was able to basically take all those components and com- and put it in its compact form, uh, and this helped me modify the unfurled version because once again I'm basing it off of off of images I've seen. But, for instance, you know, what's the angle? What is the angle of that that magazine? Yeah. Well, I know it fits along this line. So, if my angle's like 45 degrees and all of a sudden I have this jagged point here, I know that's wrong. wrong. So, I have yeah. to adjust that. And that's how <clears throat> these both, both the unfurled and the, the compacted version, help design each, each other. Each other. So, yeah. Um, so from but basically from here, what what's the plan for uh, getting the templates from here? I I didn't notice. All we, all we do, all we're doing is all we're going to do is it's just, okay. They all, all they're already single pieces. Yeah, they're already single pieces. Okay. All I have to do is pull them apart pull and and, and then print. just print them. So and that's and that's probably that'll be the next video which will probably be a little bit boring because you're just going to see like reams and reams and reams of paper getting printed and getting cut and taped together and then cut some more uh but from there you yeah, know, yeah it's, we're, we're no friends of trees apparently no um although hey I, it's your thing <laughs> um is there a way uh, you're going to like uncolor these? Yeah. Okay. Um, because as it is right now, yeah, you'll kill going... your kill your ink cartridge. No. Yeah. Uh, SketchUp has the ability if I can find it real quick under their styles. Oh, okay. I can turn it just straight up black and white. White. Oh, okay. So. so it'll just print. It'll just print the red, uh, the the black outlines Lining. of all the pieces. Okay. Um. And then we just we just yeah. trace and cut it out. But like if like like we've shown you a couple of times, both here and in Mark One and in the other uh, tutorial, uh, this is how we get our templates. Um. So once we will show you the video on you know 
basically printing and taping paper together and but then you'll get a stack of templates uh, some of these we you'll have to like either print twice um, or have two pieces like okay. uh, you know like this this uh, the main uh, the main arm right here uh, because as you can see it's it's kind of um, it's leveled or I mean, beveled layered so you would have to print one piece for the top layer the the quote unquote red red part uh and then cut another piece it would just be a solid piece for the black parts mm -hmm. um but yeah, i mean, you know that again we can show you that at a uh, a later and we'll show you that in later videos and everything so um yeah. and you can see i mean this is just from my my methods is yeah you know I can turn each individual piece on and off right uh, to really fine tune certain areas yeah although with now with just the shaft we've got um like on Mark One in the current uh, current it's just a it's just a straight like square it's a half inch wood wood, wood square wood, wood pulp uh, pipe yeah. We found out that, um, well, I'll let you explain it. It's yeah. really kind of interesting and funny. The original image we based it off of, the Mark the Mark 1, we're like, okay, this looks like... The, the way we were going to design, what well, we did design it, was that this wood shaft went straight through all the way and formed the entire spine of this uh, and allowed us to attach the head to, to the... Uh, to the to the shaft yeah you know because there's a there's a bad moment connection right there that's going to want to rip this off yeah so we knew we were going to have to secure that well in mark two and the more fine tuning of the dimensions we discovered that the shaft does not line up with the barrel yeah so now we have <laughs> this nice little kink somewhere mm -hmm. That we're going to have to math. Which does make sense. I mean, if you, if you look at traditional scythes, yeah. they have this, this like crook. Curve. Right. Because mm -hmm. the person's supposed to be standing here. Yeah. No. Oh. But. No, here. Yeah. Anyway. So basically, like, the top of the, the handle, so to say, makes up the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. So it's... And so far, the solution uh, that I that I'm thinking of is we're doing the same thing. We're going to get a half inch wood, wood, uh, wood, wood stick. Yeah. Um, and then just like, and cut it in half, have this piece run all the way to there, but then have the barrel piece run all the way back to the back. And then we're just going to, I'll nail them together, nail them together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that way there's, it's still one solid piece, mm -hmm. uh, but it gets us that offset. From, yeah, from the, and the the other challenge is the charging handle. We uh, in Mark One, our charging handle is completely wrong. Yes, uh, from the from the original anime, we were sitting there like, okay, there's a charging handle somewhere in here. We, uh, for those that don't know, the charging handle is what she uses to cock the gun and sometimes a, as a handle to uh, to swing the scythe. Yeah, it, it ejects the spent round and loads in the new right. round because because yeah. of the sniper rifle. Mm -hmm. Originally, we were like a combination of we didn't know where it was located because it pops out somewhere from the yeah. gun. And in building, we decided to make this section the handle. Uh, whether at the time we didn't know whether it was or wasn't, but it allowed us to create a handle to allow Laura to easily carry the right the the scythe. Yeah. We've come to find out now that's wrong. That's actually the... That is the barrel. That is the barrel. That's the receiver and the bolt. Yeah. The charging handle is actually that thin... Thin little red part there. That's like only a quarter inch thick. And I'm just like, that's going to be flimsy for a charging handle. Um, so we're going to be playing around with that. We may still end up leaving... That as the charging yeah, handle. Yeah, the bolt as because the charging handle. Every con that we've been to... Every photo shoot that we've done, nobody has noticed that. Yeah. That's 
that's in error. Um, okay. The other thing too, like I said, uh, Mark One has a bunch of broken pieces. Yeah, that's missing because it it broke off. Mm -hmm. uh, the trigger. Yeah, the trigger somehow disappeared. Yeah. Um, the talons. The talons are actually broken. And I think that's the only pieces yeah. that are... The, the stinger is starting to show uh, show its uh, wear and tear, so... Yeah, and we're debating on whether to leave it as plastic or make it out of metal oh. or something. Uh, just to... Just for durability, because... You know, we, we, we propped this thing up on that stinger, stinger a lot. Stinger a lot, yeah. And, once again, the original one was, you know, 20, 30 pounds. pounds. So it... And we've progressively gotten lighter and lighter so I'm, I'm thinking i'm thinking 13 is where it's going to be at now i think we, well it depends on what we what we do with the muzzle uh because the muzzle for mark one and currently is a what a two by four of uh solid bamboo solid bamboo that no um, no it's not bamboo it's uh it's it's a hardwood because yeah. it weighs like a Two pounds on itself. Yeah, it weighs like two pounds. It's ridiculously and it's, heavy. It's not just the muzzle. It's it's this piece, the muzzle. Yeah. And we included a uh, a piece that came out to here to help. Uh, basically, like an attachment arm. Yeah, to help support and add you know add reinforcement to this moment connection right here because otherwise the weight of this would just kind of rip these pieces off of right yeah so we just had to have more surface area for this connection um but with mark with mark or two and the lighter the lighter head and, and blades yeah you may be able to get away with uh you know lighter wood piece or maybe like pine <coughs> or we can also i mean we have the ability to 3d print yeah, you know, we can potentially get this 3D printed Print with a hollow, with a honeycomb center. Center. So we reduce the weight, yeah. but still allow us the the surface area we need for the yeah. connection. <laughs> they'll they'll be prototyping probably for that. Yeah. Um, I, I, there we could also try uh, layering um, insulation foam. Um, so because that's that's pretty durable, and particularly you know. Um, yeah, especially with the lighter weight materials that yeah. we're going to be using. So, uh, like I said, uh, as you can hopefully can see with this video, is this is really the design uh, part, and this is really just all things that you got to take in for any prop. But for something like Crescent Rose or anything large, you really have got to like engineer things. Yeah, and I'm getting on that real quick. Is with large props, you. Even stress points not only that but it's also um transport yeah how are you you know this ain't seven feet tall yeah even before we cut a single piece we had this we're like all right this is going to have to break, break down. down yeah uh so you're gonna have to think about that when you're creating your props especially giant props is mm -hmm. how am i going to transport this yeah. if you go to a lot of cons uh some of the people we build stuff for they travel on airliners yeah and going through TSA with a seven foot scythe will get you flagged quick. Yeah. Uh, so what we did with with Crescent was we actually made it in several pieces. This whole stinger assembly comes apart. Comes apart, and it's attached via magnets. Uh, the the magazine drops. That didn't have to do it. Do we it. Just, that was just kind of a cool factor because we were going to put in like the special ammo um, magazine with magazine the, with the cross that she that she, you see her use in the trailer, but we never did. Yeah, it was uh, time constraint on that. Yeah. But the big thing was separating the head piece from yeah. the shaft, and we and that's one reason why we went with a stronger with the thick wood there. Right. Yeah. Was we knew this was going to be two separate pieces, and we wanted to make sure that this moment. The stress point was strong enough to withstand the con. Yeah. Um, and we used two 25-pound... Pull magnets. Neodymium rare earth Bird magnets. magnets. <laughs> uh, I had a buddy when when we first got them. Funny yeah. story. He's like, I'm sitting there telling him, these yeah. are 25-pound. Yeah. And he's like, oh, you know, and they're... they're they're only quarter like... Quarter inch. Quarter inch. Square cubes. Yeah. And he's... 
He's like goofing around thinking, oh, no, no. And he near about crushed his finger with him. Yeah. He was like, oh. I'm like, yeah, dude. Well, and us breaking it down, like I had to grab the head, you would grab the shaft, and we would kind of like pull in opposite directions. Sadly, now, like the magnets are stuck in there. Yeah. They they, they broke apart from their... The epoxy holding the magnet to the shaft failed before the these magnets did. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, you we're ju- going to have to uh, like experiment uh, with uh, with how we're going to connect the port the parts again. Mm-hmm. And naturally, uh, we kind of touched on it was you know some of the other stress points were you know the talons. I mean, I- anytime you have a prop that comes to a fine point. The, it's going to break. Just yeah. just come to the, the realization that that it's is going, going to, to break at some point, some way, somehow. Uh, the other I found out the other another break point is right here uh, in this area um, because if you turn it, you see that it's hollow. So that that point right there is is a great. Uh, stress point and it'll just want to snap. Yeah, you uh, have all the, all this weight confined by these two yeah. thin you know, supported by these two thin pieces. So, right. You know, not only do you have a moment connection, but you also, you know... Have uh, empty space. So that that has that has snapped a couple of times yeah. on some of our versions. And that's why, you know, we have all these thin pieces. That's why we, on this side, we definitely we decided to extend a piece in there to help support all that that you can't um, even see or notice really yeah once it gets all these other little incendiary pieces incendiary incendiary secondary yeah, whatever, whatever. Uh, I do words good yep uh, but luckily you know Crescent was des- the the people who designed Crescent uh, Montium and whatnot you know they thought about it too you know as far as these forces you mm-hmm. know and you have this this swing arm that Helps support this head, and uh, while Mark wanted, we weren't sure when we were originally designing this yeah. whether these these were going to be glued or whatnot. Because I'm looking at it as like this would be great to support all of this. Yeah. Uh, luckily, we came out, and it, these are separate pieces that do not connect to this mm-hmm. in our our prop. Uh, they just float there, but look like they are attached. Attached. Um, so. But if it if it did pan out to be too heavy, they were going to be pinned to that. Yeah. Or somehow connected to help support. Uh, but yeah, any anytime you have thin thin pieces, uh, you're going to have to figure out where is it going to break. And it's yeah. these thin thin little pieces, sharp points. Uh, you're going to have to identify those and figure out is there a way to engineer it to where it won't. Yeah. Or am I just going to have to come to the realization that I'm going to be fixing this repeatedly? Yeah. Um, and so, like, now I think this this back arm, we're going to uh, make most of it out of Sintra uh, because it's the, the amount of Sintra we're adding isn't really adding much, much in the way of weight. And we're going to be reducing the weight on this piece because yeah. Mark 1, this was... Solid, solid, a solid chunk yeah. that we made out of foam and whatnot. But in the new images that I've that we've that we found, mm-hmm. we've realized this is hollow. There, there's two separate pieces, so that's going to reduce the weight. We're not going to make this out of foam. We're going to make this out of like insulation foam. So yeah. we're going to cut a few pound, a few grams there. Yeah. Uh, so making these pieces out of Centra. And maybe leave these as plexiglass or something. Well, no, they're they're center now, and oh, they okay. haven't they haven't. Yeah, sorry, I yeah. keep going back to Mark One. Yeah, uh, we're only we're you know if anything we're only going to increase the weight ever so slightly. Slightly. So like instead of thirteen pounds, it might be thirteen and a half pounds. Yeah, I still think once this is complete, it will be lighter than. Well, yeah, we're, we're, this is basing it off of the current model, but talking about all of these cutty, uh, shortcuts, or not really shortcuts, but improvements that we're talking about, you're probably right. So it basically will probably end with 13 pounds 
even. Mm -hmm. But so anyways, guys, that is kind of the design process um, of how to design Crescent Rose. Um, like I said, I've got a video on how uh, how you can make your own templates. Uh, you saw how we're going to be making uh, our templates for this. Our next video is going to be basically printing and putting uh, the paper together. Yeah, we could probably show them, you know, us exploding crescent rows into right. its little pieces. And then printing it uh, and then putting it together and then like, yay, here's our pile of uh, templates. Uh, so anyways, guys, if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, leave them down in the um, comment section below. Uh, be sure to uh, like and subscribe if you uh, if you liked this video. Uh, but as always, uh, this is Barry and Jerry with uh, Geek Out Studio. So we'll see you next time.